Distinguished future physicians, welcome to Stomp on Step 1, the only free video series that helps you study more efficiently by focusing on the highest yield material. In this video, we're going to be covering different types of cellular stress and adaption like hyperplasia and hypertrophy. This is the first of eight videos in the cell injury and cancer section, so I hope you check out the rest of these when you're done with this one. Cellular stress is when an individual cell is placed in an inhospitable environment or asked to do something that it currently can't do. This causes the cell to either die or adapt to the new situation so it can better handle what's going on. When there's an increase in cell stress, cells can often meet this new level of demand by going through hypertrophy or hyperplasia, which I'll talk about more in a second. However, if the cell cannot meet the new level of demand, it will undergo cell injury. If the cell injury is reversible, you're going to see the hallmark of cellular swelling. And if it's irreversible, you're going to have cell death via apoptosis and necrosis. And we'll talk about more of these types of cellular death and reversible versus irreversible injury in later videos. You can see here that I give this slide, which is going to discuss hypertrophy and a few other things, a high yield rating of 7. For those of you that do not know what that is, it is a rating scale from 0 to 10, giving you a rough estimate for how important each topic is for the Step 1 exam. And if you'd like to learn more about how the high yield rating is calculated or used, you can head here to my website. Hypertrophy is going to be an increase in cell size which usually is accompanied by an increase in the overall size of the organ because you're having most of the cells in the organ increase in size. Examples would include muscles getting bigger due to weight training or the heart wall thickening due to having to work harder in a patient with hypertension. Hyperplasia is an increase in the number of cells. So the cells in the organ is gonna undergo mitosis and replicate to give you multiple daughter cells. This can also present as an organ increasing in size overall. An example would be hyperplasia of the adrenal cortex in Cushing's disease in order to be able to produce more cortisol. It should be noted that the central nervous system and muscle, which includes the heart, cannot undergo hyperplasia. So when these tissues are placed under increased cell stress, they can only undergo hypertrophy. They cannot undergo hyperplasia. This is because these tissues are permanent tissues that are stuck in the G0 phase. They cannot undergo mitosis. Atrophy is when there's a decrease in cell stress. And you have a decreased number of cells and decrease in cell size via apoptosis mainly, and also shrinking of different organelles in the cell through things like lysosomal degradation. An example of this would be a person who wears a cast for a really long time and doesn't use certain muscles, and those muscles are going to atrophy and shrink over time. Here's the flow chart for atrophy. A decrease in cell stress leads to atrophy, which can be reversible, a decrease in cell size, or irreversible, apoptosis, or cell death. Given the situation, you actually want cell death because you don't need all those extra cells, and providing those cells with nutrients and energy is an unnecessary expenditure if you no longer need the cells because there's been a decrease in cell stress. Metaplasia is when there's a change in the cell type because the type of cellular stress has changed. It involves the replacement of one cell type with a different cell type that is better equipped to handle the new kind of stress placed on the tissue. An example would be Barrett's esophagus. In this case, GERD leads to stomach acid retrograding up into the esophagus, and as a result, Stratified squamous esophageal cells are replaced by goblet cells, which are better able to handle the stomach acid because they can create mucus. Another example would be the replacement of pseudostratified columnar cells in the respiratory system with squamous epithelium as a result of frequent cigarette smoking. Metaplasia can be physiologic or pathologic, but is not cancerous on its own. However, prolonged metaplasia can turn into dysplasia, which is a precursor to cancers. 
and we'll discuss more about the pathway to cancer in a later video in this section. Again, here's just a flowchart for this. A change in, in the type of cellular stress can lead to reversible change, which would be metaplasia and a change in cell type, or rever irreversible change. If these cells cannot undergo metaplasia, they could also just die and go through apoptosis or necrosis. That brings us to the end of this video. Please give me some feedback by commenting at the bottom of the page. Those of you that are familiar with my video series know that I currently only have videos that cover about a quarter of the total material on step one. Before I dedicate a bunch more money and time to finishing the project, I want to make sure you all actually find it useful. You could say stop on step one is currently in the proof of concept phase. So please let me know if you love it, hate it, or have suggestions for how to improve it.